before I get started now, members will take their seats and visitors retire behind the rail. Thank you. To give our invocation this morning, the chair recognizes Mr. Larry Gallagher of Calvary Chapel of Philadelphia. He is here today as the guest of Councilman Al Taubenberger. I would ask all members, guests, and visitors to please rise. Thank you, President Clark, and I'd like to thank everybody here for allowing me to be here and pray today. Um, I wanted to just open up briefly with uh, Proverbs uh, from uh, the Book of Wisdom, um, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. It goes something like this. Um, Without wise counsel, the people fall, <clears throat> but in the, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. And I, I thought that would be appropriate to start here because I'm a small business owner and I have about 25 employees. And I find it almost impossible for me to go to work every day without reading the word, hitting my knees and praying for my employees. Um, I've been successful, been blessed by God for many years now. And I can't imagine what it would be like to be responsible for a city of 1.5 million people and make decisions and rules that affect so many of us. So I just want to pray for council and let you folks get started with your work and, uh, and just thank you again for letting me be here. Heavenly Father, we just ask you, Lord, as you look down upon this assembly, that you, we know that you see every heart that's here. You know every, every secret, every intention. And Lord, we need your wisdom. I pray that council all of our leaders in the city, every department, every public servant, that they would seek your will and your wisdom and the power to carry it out every day. We ask all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very Thank you, much for those inspiring words. Council will be at ease. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gallagher. The next order of business is the approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, October 5th, 2017. And the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, October 5th, 2017 be approved. Second. Thank you, it has been moved and properly second. The journal of the meeting of Thursday, October stand approved. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and the journal is a plea. Next order of business is request for leaves of absence, and the chair recognizes Councilman Hayden. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the majority, there are no requests of leave of absence today. Chair, thanks the gentleman. Chair now recognizes Councilman O.
for some. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Council President. I was too eager. It's okay. Um, yes, on behalf of the minority, there is one request for leave. That is by uh, uh, Minority Leader Councilman Brian O'Neill. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. The record shall reflect leave shall be granted. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> At this time, I would like to dispense with the regular order of business, and I would like to welcome everyone and thank you for taking time out of your busy day to come down and witness your government in action. We genuinely appreciate you being here today. Uh, we hope your stay here today is a knowledgeable one, but more importantly, a pleasurable one, so much so that you come back again. Again, thank you for being here. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilman O, who will present a resolution recognizing Philadelphia Stephen Starr, Michael Solomonoff, and Greg Vernick as winners of the 2017 James Beard Awards. With Mr. Starr and those accompanying him, please join the Councilman at the podium. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilwoman. And before can I, can we I, begin our presentation, may I make an introduction? Sure. Thank um, you. Thank you, Councilman Chair, O. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you. We'll just let Councilman O stand there longer than everybody. Um, it is with great pleasure that we introduce some special guests today. In fact, we had them here at our meeting last night with the Mayor's Commission on African and Caribbean Immigrant Affairs and Echoes of Africa. They are here. First, I would like to, uh, they are a Brazilian delegation that we're welcoming here. Of course, we have our own Honorable Stanley Strader, part of the commission, part of Echoes, uh, immediate past president, uh, UNESCO, Honorary Council of Guinea, and so many other, uh, wear so many other hats. He is with here with Dr. Ken, would all of them stand for us as we call your name? Dr. Ken Dosar Mandinga Productions, uh, Mr. Lionel uh, Leo Neto, Director of the Center for Studies and Strategies in International Relations. We're having a meeting today on tourism and that we hope you all will attend. Mr. Felipe Lucas, He's a city councilman from Salvador, Bahia, right. leader of the cabinet delegation. So he's your counterpart, uh, Mr. President, and, uh, in uh, Salvador. Ms. Regina Ahmed, director of promotions, Bahia Tursa. Mr. Pedro Gramacho, marketing manager, Bahia Tursa. And Lucy Calide, uh, uh, Nascimento Bahia Torsa, and they are he, they are in Philly to celebrate Bahia Week and to explore collaborating with the Mayor's Commission on African and Caribbean Immigrant Affairs on the development of African heritage tourism in Philly and Salvador Bahia Brazil. As you know, outside of Africa. Brazil has the largest population of Africans. Philly and Salvador have been working together since 1984. The city of, city, excuse me, the city of Salvador has an 80% population of Afro-Brazilian people. We thank Dr. Ken Dosar from Temple, uh, Susanna Silver who couldn't join us, and Leonel Leo Neto, as well as our own Stan Strader for organizing this program to organize African heritage tourism initiatives. Thank you, there they Thank are. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for being here this evening. Councilman O. And joining Councilman O. Hey, man, how you been? And joining Councilman O, we have Councilman Squilla, Councilwoman Bass, Councilman Dom, and Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Uh, just briefly, we are uh, so pleased that uh, the three uh, chefs, uh, famous chefs of Philadelphia, have been honored uh, with a, uh, a tremendous recognition. And just the publicity, of course, has really elevated our city, as has their uh, their restaurants, uh, Philadelphia is a destination point, and it is added to our culture and to uh, our tourism. And with that, 
Let me uh, recognize and honor Philadelphia's Stephen Starr, Michael Solomonoff, and Greg Vernick as winners of the 2017 James Beard Awards. Whereas established in 1990, the James Beard Awards recognize culinary professionals for excellence and achievement in their fields and celebrate, nurture, and honor chefs and other leaders making America's food culture more delicious, diverse, and sustainable for everyone. They are considered the most prestigious culinary awards in America, and Time Magazine has called them, quote, the Oscars of the food world. And whereas facing extremely tough national competition, 20 restaurant chefs and restaurateurs from the greater Philadelphia area were named semifinalists for the 2017 James Beard Awards. And whereas on May 1st, 2017, three individuals based in Philadelphia were announced as winners at the 2017 James Beard Foundation Awards in Chicago, a major recognition of the excellent culinary scene in Philadelphia. And whereas the 2017 James Beard Award for Outstanding Restaurateur was presented to Stephen Starr of Star Restaurants based in Philadelphia. This award is given to a working restaurateur who sets high national standards in restaurant oper operations and entrepreneurship. Philadelphia alone is home to 19 popular Stephen Starr restaurants. And this is the perfect date night restaurant, folks. I've done it. Trust me, if you haven't been to Savah, it is well worth it. Uh, the 2017 James Beard Award for Outstanding Chef was presented to Michael Solomonov of Sava in Philadelphia. This award is given to a working chef in America whose career has set national industry standards and who has served as an inspiration to other food professionals. Solomonov and chef business partner Stephen Cook own six restaurants in Philadelphia, including Sava, their first restaurant, and whereas the 2017 James Beard Award for Best Chef Mid-Atlantic was presented to Greg Vernick of Vernick Food and Drink in Philadelphia. This award is given to a chef who has set new or consistent standards of excellence in Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey, Maryland, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. While Vernick's restaurant near Rittenhouse Square has been open for only five years, he has a James Beard Award finalist for the past three consecutive years. And whereas for years, Philadelphian visitors have enjoyed exquisite dining experiences at restaurants run by Stephen Starr, Michael Samanov, Greg Vernick, and now validated by the 2017 James Beard Awards as some of the finest in the United States. Philadelphia's James Beard Award winners feed the growth of the city's creative economy and recognition bolsters the city's reputation as a growing hub of excellence in creativity and culture. And whereas Philadelphia takes great pride in its food, and Michael Samanov, Stephen Starr, and Greg Vernick's restaurants are beloved local favorites. These Philadelphians are more than deserving of their illustrious awards, and the city of Philadelphia applauds their significant contribution in building the local restaurant scene into one of which now receives national renown attention. There, therefore, be it. I'm going to add a few words off the record here. But um, the good news is that um, all three of these tremendous restaurant entrepreneurs behind me, fortunately or unfortunately, I have eaten at every one of their restaurants. Okay? And I must say they're un unbelievable. But for Philadelphia, the uniqueness is that we took more James Beard Awards than any other city in the country, which is pretty amazing. And we have these three people to thank for that. Um, so they're and hereby recognized and honors Philadelphia's Stephen Starr, Michael Solomonov and Greg Vernick as winners of the 2017 James Beard Awards. Further resolved that engrossed copies of the resolution be presented to Stephen Starr, Michael Solomonov, and Greg Vernick as evidence of the admiration and respect of this legislative body. Let me say a few other words. Greg Vernick has a fa fabulous restaurant, 2000 Block of Walnut, and he's opening a new restaurant in the new Comcast Four Seasons that will be a world-class restaurant. Tremendous congratulations to him. And Michael Solomonov and Jeff Cook have now, I think, 12 restaurants, whether they're Federal Donuts or Zahav or Abe Fisher or Diesengoff, and they're all over. They're from Miami to New York and in Philadelphia. And Stephen Starr has 36 total restaurants with Le Cuckoo in New York 
being the big, big winner in the James Beard Award. So tremendous congratulations to all three, and thank you, Councilman. Thank you. And the chair recognizes Mr. Starr for remarks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you very much for this uh, uh, honor. It is truly an honor to be uh, uh, held in such esteem by your hometown. Uh, I really want to thank the city of Philadelphia because, you know, I have restaurants here and in New York and Miami and Washington, D.C., and soon at Los Angeles. But I, I would be nothing if it weren't for this city. This is the city I started in, the city that embraced what I did, the city that kept, uh, kept me going and was loyal throughout uh, all these years. So my biggest gratitude is to the city of Philadelphia and to the people who really made me what I am today. And I want to thank you very much. And I hope city council continues to make this city a city that can thrive for small business and business uh, because I was here before all the restaurants were uh, such a big deal and, 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 and it was a city that was not growing. And once the restaurant scene started here, and I'm not the only one that started it, uh, it became such a vital city and such an important city. And I hope that that, uh, that stays in your mindset as you pass laws and consider uh, the future of the city. Anyway, thank you very much and it truly is an honor to be here. <laughs> Council of Ladies. Oh, you all speaking? Oh, okay. <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, thank you, City Council. Um, it's, to echo what Stephen said, this is truly an honor to be recognized. Um, I, too, love this city with all my heart. My business is here, my family's here. I spend every day here. I'm very proud to represent Philadelphia. Um, I'm going to continue working hard to make this city even better than it is. I've seen it grow over the last five years and I want to continue to push. I want to thank uh, both Stephen and Michael for sort of creating such an amazing foundation for the restaurant community for us to be part of. Um, and, and really, thank you very much. We're just going to keep pushing. Thank you. I just want to thank you all personally and thank you to uh, City Council and for the great city of Philadelphia. It was an honor to, to be able to hold a medal, uh, to win a national award and to be able to um, celebrate the city in which we've sort of come up in. Uh, I have, I'm not from Philadelphia. I've lived here for 17 years and I'm proud to be uh, sort of a child of, of Philadelphia. I feel like I, I have grown up here as an adult and to to uh, start here in 2000 and to see where we've come, um, it's just amazing. I think that culturally, culinary, uh, we have so much going on for the city and it's amazing to get New Yorkers and DC to come to Philadelphia to have dinner. There's something really, maybe from an ego perspective, uh, I just find it to be really awesome. So uh, thank you very much and uh, we'll continue doing a good job for you.
Congratulations again, and thank you very much. <clears throat> the next order of business is communications, and the chair requested the sergeant of arms delivers the messages from the mayor to the chief clerk. Mr. Decker, would you please read those messages? To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, I am pleased to advise you that on October 11, 2017, I signed the following bill, which was passed by Council at a session on September 28, 2017, bill number 161106. Mr. Decker, you have any other messages or communication? I have none, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Our next order of business will be the introduction of bills and resolutions, and the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer a one privilege re resolution, two non privileged resolutions, and I would like to be recognized for a motion after the title of the resolution on the clear cars, clean, clean, care, clean car standards, and I do offer one, one bill on your behalf. Thank you, Councilwoman. An ordinance amending Chapter 16300 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Maintenance and Supervision by authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to promulgate regulations prohibiting city employees from, from possessing certain symbols, materials, and objects in city-owned or city-occupied facilities. That bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. And a privilege resolution celebrating the 90th anniversary of the Philadelphia Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. That's Councilwoman, you want to speak on that one, the next one? Right. And that will be on this week's final passes calendar. And a non-privileged resolution urging the Pennsylvania General Assembly and Congress of the United States to protect, to, to protect access to preventative health services at Planned Parenthood Health Centers in Pennsylvania. Chair, recognize Councilwoman. No? The next one. Right. And that will be on next week's final passes calendar. Right. So and a non-privileged resolution celebrating the fifth anniversary of the clean air standards and urging the federal government to strengthen fuel economy standards that reduce pollution and reliance on fossil fuels. Chair now recognize Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. And I thank you, Mr. President. I ask for a suspension of the rules so that the clean air standard resolution can be heard on today's final passage calendar. Thank you, it's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that will be on today's final passage calendar. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I introduce uh, no new legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. On your behalf, I offer two resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. A non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city on lots or pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements around situated in the 32nd Ward of the City of Philadelphia. And that will be on next week's final pass calendar. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city on lots or pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements around situated in the 32nd Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Next week's calendar. Chair now recognize Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I have one privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilman. A non-privileged resolution also naming the 8100 80, block of Fairfield Street as Dr. Angelo DiBello Place. And that will be on next week's final passage calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I have one. Privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilman. A privileged resolution honoring the life of esteemed community advocate Kesho Watson, who passed away on Monday, October 9, 2017. That will be on this week's final passage calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Council President, I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman McKeonis Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I have two resolutions, one non-privileged, one privileged. Thank you, Councilwoman. A privileged resolution proclaiming October 15, 2017 as Ronald McDonald House Global Day of Change in the City of Philadelphia. 
And that will be on today's final passage calendar. And a non-privileged resolution renaming the 4200 block of Markland Street, David, David Howarth Way. Next week's calendar, Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer one privileged resolution as co-sponsored by Council Members Taubenberger, Reynolds Brown, Gim, Dom, Green, and Bass, and I also offer one bill on your behalf. And after the title of the bill is read, I would like to make a brief comment. Thank you, Councilwoman. An ordinance authorizing and approving the execution and delivery of a service agreement between the City of Philadelphia and the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority relating to the financing of a home repair program for city homeowners, approving the issuance by such authority of bonds, notes, or other evidences of indebtedness, including reimbursement obligations related to lines or letters of credit in one or more series to finance or refinance such program, and authorizing and approving the obligation of the city to pay in full when due the service fee and other amounts payable under the service agreement authorizing certain office, city officers to take certain actions required to issue such bonds, notes or other evidences of indebtedness, covenanting, covenanting that the city will make necessary appropriations in each of the city's fiscal years to provide for, and will make timely payments of the service fee and other amounts due under the service agreement. Chair recognize Councilwoman Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, as members of this council, along with the administration, uh, worked to uh, get the rebuild initiative passed, there was a lot of excitement about the infrastructure improvements uh, to be made to our parks, rec centers, and libraries, because all Philadelphians could enjoy them sort of indirectly. But Mr. President, today is a very special day because this legislation that we are introducing, um, in fact, will enhance affordable housing in the city of Philadelphia. And I, I literally want to borrow your line. Uh, the best way to increase affordable housing in the city is to maintain our existing housing stock. And I just want to take a minute to say thank you. Uh, and members of the public may remember that last year we passed uh, a very small increase to the realty transfer tax that would allow us to issue $100 million in bonds. And $60 million of that 100 went to eliminating the massive backlog associated with our basic systems home repair, uh, and over 8,000 people will receive uh, assistance from that. Um, but this legislation that I've introduced today on your behalf will allow the remaining $40 million to move forward with the service agreement between the city and the redevelopment authority to administer a home loan repair program. And I say loan because it will be sustainable. We're not talking about simply just passing out grants and, you know, when the well is dry, it's dry and we have nowhere else to go. Um, people now will have access to revenue that will assist them to repair crumbling steps, fix a retaining wall, get their bricks pointed, and Mr. President, if they choose get the driveway repaired. And uh, this has been an issue in the city for a long time. It may not be a big deal to some people, but if you own a house and are retired in this city and make a nickel over the income eligibility guidelines for any of the city's grant programs, this means everything to you. And this would not have happened without your leadership. And I wanted to say thank you for the record. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Jones, you hear that? She's talking about getting those driveways. I know, you, I know you've been on that for a minute. <laughs> Thank you. I, I look forward to working with her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, that bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. And a privilege resolution honoring and recognizing the students, staff, and partners of Hill Friedman World Academy High School in collaboration with Live Connections on the release of First Verse, a student-led mm -hmm. original CD album of poetry set to music. And that will be on this week's final passage calendar. Chair recognize Councilman Don. Good morning, Council President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognize Councilwoman Gibb. Good morning, Mr. President. I have one privileged and one non privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilwoman.
A privilege resolution commemorating the 50th, 50th anniversary of the founding of Temple University Urban Archives and honoring the essential role that the Urban Archives have played in preserving a record of Philadelphia's history and culture. That yeah, will be on today's calendar. And a non-privilege resolution urging President Donald Trump and Acting Secretary of Homeland Security Elaine Duke to protect thousands of Haitians living in Philadelphia and nationwide through the extension of Haiti's temporary protected status designation beyond January 22nd, 2018. That will be on next week's calendar. Chair recognized Councilman Taubenberger. Good morning, Council President and colleagues. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilman. And the Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President, for one non-privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilman. A non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to, get, to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city owned lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 31st Ward of the City of Philadelphia. That'll be on next week's calendar. And the Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer one, res one uh, non-privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilwoman. A non-privileged resolution opposing, opposing the decision by the Trump administration to roll back access contraceptive co coverage for female employees under the Affordable Care Act. And that will be on next week's final passes calendar. And the chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. I offer one privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilman. A privilege resolution recognizing and honoring Bethany African Methodist Episcopal Church on the occasion of its 200th anniversary. And that will be on this week's final passage calendar. The next order of business will be to reports of committees. The chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell from a report of the Committee of Finance. Thank you very much, Mr. President. The Committee on Finance reports out one bill with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilman. Chief Clerk, would you please read the title of the report? To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, the Committee on Finance, which is referred Bill Number 170792, entitled An Ordinance Amending Chapter 19-3200 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Keystone Opportunity Zone, Economic Development District, and Strategic Development Area, to provide for additional extensions of certain benefits under certain terms and conditions. Respectful of reports, it has considered and amended the same and returns the attached bill to council with a favorable recommendation. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 170792. Second. It has been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended as to permit the first, the first reading of this bill, number 170792, all those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. This bill will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. The clerk, please, the chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Public Safety Committee reports one bill out with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilman. Chief Clerk, would you please read the title of the report? The Committee on Public Safety, to which is referred Bill Number 170674, entitled an Ordinance Amending Section 10825 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Stun Guns, by further providing for the regulation of stun guns, also known as electric or electronic incapacitation devices. Respectfully reports it is considered the same and returns the attached bill to Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading of this day, bill number 170674. It has been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit the first reading of this day, bill number 170674. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it, and this bill will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. 
Uh, the next order of business will be the consideration of the calendar. I don't know, and I also note that the bills just reported from this committee with the suspension of the rules have been deemed to have been first reading these bills and will be placed on the second reading of the final passage calendar at our next council session. Uh, as there are no additional bills on the first reading in, of the calendar, the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee for the purpose of calling up the resolutions of bills on the second reading and final passages of today's calendar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the following resolutions and bills are being called up from the second reading and final passage calendar today. Numbers 170859, 170860, 170861, 170862, 170863, 170864, 170866, 170867, 170868, 170869, 170870, 170873, 170405, 170721, 161105, 170596, 170715, 170718, and 170722. All other resolutions and bills are being held. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, before considering these resolutions and bills, we will consider the public comment as follows. Uh, your public comment must be concerned on the matters on second reading final passage for today's calendar, action of today's calendar as well. All speakers must sign in in order to testify, and if you have not already, please sign in for today's session. Do so by giving your name to Sergeant at Arms to the table of my left, and you will be called in the order in which your name appears on the sign-in sheet. You will have three minutes to speak. In order to, to be fair, all those who wish to speak, and then I intend, as we intend and have been, uh, there will be a minute left uh, you may begin speaking until you see a green light on the podium. Then you are 30. You have 30 seconds remaining in your time. The light will turn yellow, in which your remainder of your time will conclude. You shall conclude your remarks. Once three minutes have passed, the light will turn red, and the sergeant at arms will disconnect the microphone. At that point, uh, we will yield the podium to the next speaker. I also reserve the right, pursuant to our rules of council, to limit the repetitious comments on the, the subject matter. I ask the chief clerk to please read the name for our first speaker today. Patrick Duff, commenting on 170247. Good morning, council. Um, yeah, I'm count commenting on the CVS Walgreens merger, and I'm also going to go into a little something else. Um, I got a chance to caucus with some of the members here. Um, the people always do need a voice, and it's good to hear that uh, the council wants the people's voice, or the people's at least, um, the people to hear about this, this merger before it happens. But, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you had a person come to your council meeting and, and made some public comments about an officer that had shot him. And it was, there were some profound comments, and, and there were comments that if he had made these comments maybe a couple of weeks after it actually happened, maybe we could have saved another person's life in this council, or from the council meetings. Um, I'm here to ask that the public uh, comment not only include a, a section on the agenda items, and especially just the agenda items that are in the final passage calendar, because how can anybody really comment on anything when you suspend the rules of the council all the time and you, you move everything to the, to the final passage calendar? People should have the right to comment, and, and they do in all other cities in this uh, state, and they all do in Los Angeles, they do in New York, they do in Houston, they do in every other major city have the right to come and make an open public comment about matters of concern. So if I have a matter of concern, I'll give you an example. I lived in Smyrna, Delaware, a real small town. Such a small town, my wife doesn't have a driver's license. The Acme was across the street, but it was across Route 13. Now, there was no crosswalks in Smyrna, Delaware. And I'm saying to myself, are they kidding me? There's no crosswalks. How does she get to the store? She calls me at work. She says, honey, I need to get to the store. I said, babe, just take the kid, walk him to the store. She said, I can't cross the street. Now, simple enough, I went to the council. They had an open public comment section in Smyrna, Delaware, which is probably about the population of South Street. And I made the suggestion that we put crosswalks in Smyrna, Delaware. And guess what? There's now crosswalks in Smyrna, Delaware from an open public comment section about a public safety issue. Okay, 
This city is 1.5 million people of good ideas, and we get to see what's actually happening on the internal working parts of the city. Let us have the chance to come and tell you what's happening in the city. Let us come and, and tell you our thoughts on maybe bills or, or things that you've passed that we don't agree with. I mean, I know that certain people don't agree. Mr. Greenlee told me he doesn't agree. Mr. Jones seems like he agrees. I was going to write a letter. He said to write a letter to everybody and have you guys, you know, kind of respond. But I'm asking you in public. I mean, if you don't agree, you know, I understand. But if you do agree, please sponsor a bill to bring open public comment to the city where free speech was born. Can you imagine that? That eight blocks from here, we should have a little field trip so we can go visit the Constitution Center because the First Amendment allows us to have the right to free speech. Please allow that in the place that free speech started. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Clerk, would you please read the name of our next speaker? Joe Denahel, commenting on 170641, 170859, 170. 864 and 170 Okay, this is the official decree of the people in Red Man Damas Quo Warranto, and as such requires immediate action and remedy. Every year, cancel. Every week, cancel mayor and others, transfer private property to government probably illegally. What law supersedes the constitutional requirements of due process and just compensation before stealing my home? Did the U.S. Congress, Senate, and General Accounting Office issue documents directing the amounts of just compensation owed in the Logan area? Did Pennsylvania Commonwealth government issue law clearly defining monies owed before government can transfer title? PA Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, 26 PA CSA, 701 through 716. Was U.S. HUD development bulk when a government agency acquires your property handed to Mr. Danhill multiple times? Was book violated? Were constitutional laws violated? Was trial by jury opposed and denied several times? Did federal taxpayers give Philadelphia and the state of, and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania additional monies for over a decade? Were some paid and not all, violating equal treatment and cruel and unusual punishment clauses of the Constitution? Has council, mayor, and others acknowledge that the district attorneys refused sworn duty to prosecute theft of property crimes? Why has no one been prosecuted for violating oath, constitution, and law violations. The constitution laws require immediate remedy of this breach of law, breach of clothes, breach of fiduciary duty. Your oath of office requires you to act or face prison. 42 U.S.C. 1982, 1983, 1985, 1986, 1987, 18 U.S.C. 241, 242, 23A1, 23A4, PA Constitution, Article 1, Sections 1 through 11, 26 PA CSA, 703, 705, 708, 709, 712, 713, 716, and other laws listed in SCOTUS. 158965 141330 144056 appear violated. I call for the federal and commonwealth governments to perform their constitutional obligations to investigate and prosecute all involved in the theft and illegal deed transfer of my home, 1038 West Wyoming Avenue. The denial of God given 42 USC 1982 property rights for 20 Three years is egregious, extraordinary, oath violating, and requires immediate remedy. A just government must obey the rule of law. This color of all government must have its charter government revoked until a constitutionally compliant government is installed. Public servants cannot refuse their sworn duty to act any more than a fireman can refuse to fight a fire. The sovereign people require constitutional laws be enforced, and jail is required for all who violate oath or law. I remind counsel. It takes a lot of cooperation to create and allow monumental corruption. 23 years worth. Thank you for your comments. Chief Clerk, is there anyone else here who wish to sign up or have signed up to provide public comment on today's agenda? John Pertit. 
John Pertit Pettit commenting on Councilwoman Gim's resolution commemorating Temple University's Urban Archives resolution introduced today. Great. Um, just wanted to thank um, Councilwoman Gim um, and the rest of Council for honoring Urban Archives' 50th anniversary. Um, I have, as a lifelong Philadelphian, I've used Urban Archives as a student and uh, have been an employee there for 14 years. Um, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary um, dedicated to collecting community material um, on the history of Philadelphia. And I am presenting a couple of events. Um, one is going to be at Lightbox Film Center at International House. Um, and it's going to be footage from KYW3 and WPVI6. Uh, some of you might even appear in the old footage. Um, and then we're also going to have an all-day symposium featuring the founder, uh, uh, Mr. Bass, and we're uh, going to ha also have speakers like Sam Katz, who's used the material, and uh, archivist Margaret Gerardo, among the many speakers. So, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Chief Clerk, has anyone else signed up for public comment for today's agenda? There are no other speakers in the public comment right. list, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, this concludes today's public comment period. We will now consider the bills and resolutions on the second reading and final passes calendar. Mr. Decker, <clears throat> please read the title of 170859. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city owned lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 51st Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair, recognize Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution 170859 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170860. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city owned lots or pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 16th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. 170860 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170861. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 32nd Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair again recognize Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 170861 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170862. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city on lots or pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the fourth ward of the city of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 170862 is adopted. 170863, Mr. Decker. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the, to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 38th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognize Councilman Jones. Thank you again, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. Thank you. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 170863 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170864. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the, to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city owned lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 52nd Ward of the City of Philadelphia. One more time, Chair, recognize Councilman Jones. For the third and final time, I move for the adoption. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And resolution 170864 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170866. A resolution also naming Rittner Street between South 17th Street and South 18th Street, Bishop Louis de Simone Way, in honor and recognition of his decades of exemplary service to St. Monica Parish, the Worldwide Catholic Church, and the City of Philadelphia. Chair, recognize Councilman Johnson. On behalf of Councilman Mark Squill and myself, I move the adoption of the resolution. 
It's been moving properly. Check it all those in favor. Say aye. aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. 170866 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170867. A resolution calling upon the Congress of the United States to immediately reauthorize the Children's Health Insurance Program. Chair recognize Councilman Green. President, I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. 170867 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170868. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the, to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to serve city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements that are on situated in the 43rd Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. For its adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. 170868 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170869. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to start a city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements that are on situated in the 18th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman McEwen and Sanchez. Thank you. I move for its adoption. The moved and property second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. 170869 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170870. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to serve city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements that are on situated in the 19th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. And the Chair again recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. I move for its adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. 170878 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170873. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the, to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to serve city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements that are on situated in the 39th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, I have it. 170873 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170405. An ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Memphis Street, Oakdale Street, Tulip Street, Oakdale Street, Survivor Street, and Lehigh Avenue. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom, Councilman Green, Aye. Councilman Greenlee, Aye. Councilwoman Gim, Aye. Councilman Heenan, Aye. Councilman Johnson, Aye. Councilman Jones, Aye. Councilman O, Aye. Councilwoman Parker, Aye. Councilwoman Canona Sanchez, Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Aye. Councilman Squilla, Aye. Councilman Taubenberger, Aye. Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 170-721. An ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning by revising requirements for accessory signs located within the area bounded by Juniper Street, East Pass Yonk Avenue, and Mifflin Street. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee, Aye. Councilwoman Gim, Aye. Councilman Heenan, Aye. Councilman Johnson, Aye. Councilman Jones, Aye. Councilman O, Aye. Councilwoman Parker, Aye. Councilwoman Conner Sanchez, Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Aye. Councilman Squilla, Aye. Councilman Toppenberger, Aye. Council President Clark. Aye. Ayes are 16, nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in the affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Zecker 161. 105. An ordinance amending Chapter 10700 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Refuse and Littering by expanding the reward program for the provision of information regarding short dumping and revising penalties for refuse and littering violations. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Johnson. Councilman Jones. Councilman O, Aye. Councilwoman Parker, Aye. Councilwoman Kenona Sanchez, Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Aye. Councilman Squilla, Aye. Councilman Toppenberger, Aye. Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority members present voting in the affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 170596. An ordinance authorizing Michael and Alexis Birnbaum to install, own, and maintain an exterior metal staircase and planter encroachments at 1714 through 20 South 2nd Street. 
This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Greenlee. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Conner Sanchez. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Aye. Councilman Taubenberger. Council President Clark. All right, the ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in the affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 170715. And an ordinance amending Chapter 10700 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Refuse and Littering by further amending Section 10719 entitled Penalties to conform with legislation recently enacted by the General Assembly. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the rule. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom, Councilman Green, Councilman Greenlee, Councilwoman Gim, Councilman Heenan, Councilman Johnson, Councilman Jones, Councilman O, Councilwoman Parker, Councilwoman Conner Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Councilman Squilla, Councilman Taubenberger, Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in the firm that the bill passes. Mr. Decker, 170718. An ordinance amending Chapter 12, 3000 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Use of an Automated Red Light Enforcement System to Prevent Red Light Violations by authorizing the installation of red light enforcement systems at the intersection of Rising Sun Avenue and Levick Street. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Johnson. Councilman Jones, Councilman O, Councilwoman Parker, Councilwoman Conner Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Councilman Squilla, Councilman Taubenberger. <laughs> Council President Clark. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the eyes are 16 and the nays are zero. Majority of members present. What do you the firm that the bill passes? Uh, Mr. Decker, 170-722. An ordinance amending Section 9204 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Sidewalk Vendors in Center City by eliminating previously designated vendor locations in Center City. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the rule. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Johnson. Councilman Jones. Councilman O, Councilwoman Parker, Councilwoman Conner Sanchez, Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, Councilman Squilla, Councilman Taubenberger, Council President Clark. All right, the ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present voting in affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, do you have any additional resolutions? A resolution celebrating the 90th anniversary of the Philadelphia Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, introduced by Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Chair, can I ask Councilwoman Reynolds Brown? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, co sponsored by my colleague and sorority sister, um, Councilwoman Sherelle Parker, and uh, my colleague who believes in red and white, Councilman Green, I move for the adoption. It's been moved and properly. Second, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution celebrating the fifth anniversary of the clean car standards and urging the federal government to strengthen fuel economy standards that reduce pollution and reliance on fossil fuels, introduced by Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution honoring the life of esteemed community advocate Kesho Watson, who passed away on Monday, October 9, 2017, introduced by Councilman Jones. Chair recognizes is Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Sorrowfully, I move for the adoption. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution proclaiming October 15, 2017 as Ronald McDonald House Global Day of Change in the City of Philadelphia, introduced by Councilwoman Kiona Sanchez. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Kiona Sanchez. For its adoption. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. 
Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution honoring and recognizing the students, staff, and partners of Hill Friedman World Academy High School in collaboration with Live Connections on the release of First Verse, a student-led original CD album of poetry set to music, introduced by Councilwoman Parker. Chair recognize Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. If it moved and properly second, all those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution commemorating the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Temple University Urban Archives and honoring the essential role that the urban archives have played in preserving a record of Philadelphia's history and culture, introduced by Councilwoman Gim. Chair, can I ask Councilwoman Gim? Um, yes, thank you very much, Council President. I just wanted to thank my co-sponsors, yourself, uh, Council Members Taubenberger, Green, and Dom. Um, as we heard earlier, there's a gem and a treasure inside of our own city, inside of uh, the, inside of uh, Temple University housed in the urban archives. Um, for those many of us who believe that our histories and stories aren't just told through history books and formal texts, but it can also be told through the life and vitality of photography, the Philadelphia Evening Bulletin, which documented Philadelphia's history for so many years. Um, the urban archives are an absolute gem and treasure. Matthew Countryman, a professor, is going to be coming um, to speak about uh, about his work um, with the Urban Archives, and um, it's just a real honor to be able to celebrate such a wonderful thing. And again, repeating what the gentleman who spoke earlier said, um, next week there'll be a whole host of uh, uh, different events that will celebrate the history of our city, the diversity of it, um, and its vitality, um, and I'm proud to and thank my colleagues for supporting it. Um, and with that, I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing and honoring Bethany African Methodist Episcopal Church on the occasion of its 200th anniversary, introduced by Councilman O. Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. There are no other resolutions on the final passage calendar, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Decker. That concludes our calendar for today. And any speeches on behalf of the minority? There you go. Chair recognizes Councilman O. <laughs> Thank you very much, Council President. I just wanted to uh, inform the public that there will be a regional candlelight vigil uh, this Saturday, Saturday, October the 14th at 6 p.m. at Camden Waterfront Stadium. 401 North Delaware Avenue, Camden, New Jersey. The reason I'm talking about it is because uh, we are dealing with the, uh, the, the deaths from overdose, um, we as a city and, and other cities in, in our region. And we've been trying to work out a regional approach to dealing with, in particular, the uh, heroin opioid um, epidemic that we have. And I discovered that uh, Camden has been doing a very significant uh, vigil every year and they want to make it regional, and so they've invited uh, all our surrounding counties and Philadelphia to participate. Um, and uh, this will be a, a event that is free and open to the public. I just have to state, you know, for those who may not know this, that uh, in the United States, overdose is the number one cause of death for individuals under 50 years old. And we lose 142 lives every day to overdose. In the year 2016, that's 52,404 Americans. And so for those who can attend uh, and participate, and there's many who do find um, this type of uh, visual uh, very therapeutic and, and also a very positive thing to do uh, in terms of kind of reaching out to folks and also letting people know the seriousness of the drug addiction ep epidemic, I certainly encourage everyone to attend this vigil. Again, Camden Waterfront Stadium, this Saturday, October the 14th at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. On behalf of the majority, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds-Brown. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, under the leadership of our colleague, uh, Councilman Derek Green, my office joined with the Philadelphia Federation of Teachers, Parents, and Advocates to join in and uh, lift up, become a part of the Philly Healthy Schools Initiative. And the principal goal was to create a thoughtful plan to make sure each building, school building, in our, the system is safe and healthy for the condition, are in safe and healthy conditions for the health of our children. 
The importance of this work was underscored yesterday when we learned that the John B. Kelly School was forced to close because of mold found in several classrooms. Uh, too often we are quick to um, be critical of what the school district uh, doesn't do well. Today we need to acknowledge and express appreciation that the leadership at the school district took swift action to remove all the students from the faculty and the faculty from that building until it is deemed safe and that certainly underscores the important work ahead for the Philly Healthy Schools Initiative. On a related but separate issue, uh, December 2016, the Women of City Council celebrated Philly's new lead poisoning protection measures. And it was Councilwoman Sanchez who said, and I quote, many times people don't know if people have a house built before 1974 that they may be exposed to lead. To lead. So it's not about being punitive, it's more about being thoughtful in the work that we do to establish protocols to protect our children. This week, October 9th, Philadelphia caught the attention of the country's uh, media outlet, CBS, where the topic was lead discovered in soil. The uptick in development and construction has uncovered a new but old health risk again facing our children. In booming Philadelphia neighborhoods, lead poison has been found in the soil of construction sites most notably the districts of Councilwoman Sanchez and Councilwoman, uh, Councilman Mark Squilla. The result, of course, is toxic coating of playgrounds and backyards with dangerous levels of lead dust. And we don't, I uh, won't be repetitive in speaking about the toxic dangers of lead. It severely impacts every aspect of a child's development. What is clear and what has been pointed out in this story is that developers and construction managers are simply uh, not doing their part to protect um, playgrounds and backyards. And the bad news is that developers are not required to test soil for lead as a routine precaution before disturbing land. Worst, our fact finding tells us that no single government agency is responsible for making certain our yard's soil is safe. Our administration responded by issuing a series of recommendations in the 2017 Philadelphia Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention Advisory uh, Report. Um, but clearly, the, um, the lifting up of this story on national news featuring purely Philadelphia was troubling, and it's a signal to us that we still have uh, work to do. I'm of the view that we must avoid the trap where everybody's problem is nobody's problem if we're to fully arrest this persistent health health risk. So there's still gaps in the system, and uh, be advised that my office, again, is going to link up with interested parties to fill the voids required to further protect our most vulnerable citizens, our children. Clearly, there's still work to do, and our office is rising to the occasion to do more. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. We just passed around a picture of it looks like a gun that was passed, uh, given to one of my staffers. If you look closely, it is a phone case. The phone is on the top, and it looks just like a weapon. And uh, so I'm asking my colleagues to help me figure how we outlaw this so that we don't have people in danger and children who could be killed and, uh, and, and gun issues because a phone carrier is made like a weapon. Uh, that's number one. Number two, I would like to um, certainly uh, thank our Brazilians who were here. I forgot to ask them to stay for photos, but we thank them. They'll yeah, be around still here, in a few Councilman. days. They're still here. And, great. And, uh, oh, they're still here. They're still thank here. you. So. Um, I wonder, I would like to request if some of you would stay so we can get pictures at the end with our colleagues and them so that they can take them with them. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, number three, uh, on Saturday from 8.30 to 9, Local 57 is asking them us to join them. On 6th and Spring Garden, Will they will have a trailer there to collect uh, food, uh, clothing, any personal belongings, money. For Puerto Rico, this is done uh, certainly under the leadership of the business manager, Estevan Vera Jr. And uh, 
I contacted, of course, our colleague, Maria Canoni Sanchez, who's done a fabulous job in this, to ask her help in making it happen. So we hope if you're free, you'll come. Maria has agreed to help us. They want help in contacting others, certainly in, the, in publication to the press as well, so that people will know they are doing their part in trying to help those people adversely affected in Puerto Rico. And we thank Estevan uh, Vera Jr. for bringing it to our attention. He brought it to me f f through a nephew, uh, Charles Blackwell, we call him Chi Chi, who's Lou's nephew, who's vice president of that union. So uh, let me thank uh, uh, Maria in advance, because our colleague has been fabulous in all that she's doing uh, to help Puerto Rico and uh, it, it, and she's just been wonderful. Finally, uh, let me say that today is um, the 31st birthday of Roxanne Harrell, my lawyer. So join me in wishing her happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. She's young enough that that won't be a problem with you making that public. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I want to thank uh, my colleague, Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds Brown, for bringing up the issue of the Philly Healthy Schools Initiative. Um, the concern that she has raised, as well as all members of this body, raised in reference to the recent incident at J.B. Kelly School um, is very important. And um, we need to make sure that all classrooms in the city of Philadelphia are safe and healthy for not only for the students that attend, but also the teachers and all other professionals that work there. Um, one of the reasons, well, two of the main reasons why I got involved in the Philly Healthy Schools Initiative is because two of the most important titles I've ever received are son and father. Uh, many people in this body know my mother worked in the school district um, for well over 30 years. Uh, many of those years, I only high school and my son is a 10th grader at Hill Freeman uh, World Academy. So it's very important to me as well as to all members of this body and to people throughout the city of Philadelphia that we have safe environments, safe workplaces for our children to learn and get a great education because they are the future leaders of our city as well as for all of the professionals that work in our school buildings um, to be safe, have safe environments so that way they can really teach our children um, the education and provide the instruction so they can truly be the next leaders of the future. And, and as, as a father, it's also important to note that next Saturday is the uh, annual autism walk. Um, as many people in this body also know that my son is autistic. Uh, next Saturday, uh, the October 21st at 9 a.m. at Citizens Bank Park, we will have the annual autism walk. Uh, it's a fun activity, a fun event. Um, please come out um, and have um, your coworkers, your friends, members of your churches, synagogues, mosques come out and support this great event. Um, when my son was diagnosed with autism, one out of every 200 children were on the autism spectrum. Now it's one, of every, one out of every 66 and one out of every 54 boys. So everyone in this room and everyone listening to my voice has either a neighbor, a coworker, a friend, someone in their family, uh, someone in their religious institution that has been affected by autism. So I hope that everyone can come out on Saturday, October 21st at 9 a.m. and to support the Autism Walk. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Council President. Um, just to update, I, so over the last, um, Two years, I've been working on an issue um, along the Schoolkill River Trail, specifically the issue of public safety. Um, a, a couple incidents took place um, during the winter. A couple incidents took place um, during the summertime. And it all revolved around young people um, groping and assaulting individuals who um, exercise and individuals who um, are out in the open enjoying themselves along the Schoolkill River Trail. Um, most recently, this week, we had a young lady um, from the district who was assaulted by a group of young men um, on the Schuylkill River Trail. And so I continue to work with my staff and the Department of Parks and Recreation and Town Watch um, to improve safety along um, 
a key part of the trail that's in my district. And over the past um, couple of months, we have been making some accomplishments. One is lighting along the trail has been increased significantly. And so I want to thank you for working with me and putting up some of your capital funds to increase the lighting along the trail that extended into your district. Um, we have put mile markers um, along the trail because a couple times when, when an incident did take place, um, the person didn't know where they were at. And so when they did call the police, they couldn't say, I'm at this particular area. So we did put mile markers out there. But one of the proudest um, accomplishments thus far, at least that will go to a deterring um, crime along the, the Schuylkill River Trail is the um, installment, um, the soon to be installment of 20 cameras along a portion of the trail. And someone said, well, the cameras only prevent the camera only addressed the issue after the fact, but that's not actually the case. When you're working in partnership with the Philadelphia Police Department, they have intel when they review who's just hanging out on the trail every day. So you will have that information ahead of time. So when, you, when the patrol officers are along the trail, they're able to, um, again, keep an eye out for public safety. And we've been working with the 9th Police District to um, increase on bicycle patrol, but also undercover um, officers. But most importantly, we need the public to, when they see something, um, say something. Because all, at the end of the day, on that intel, when you see people, people up to no good, is, is a good way to be proactive on this issue. So we're going to stay on top of it. But I want to personally acknowledge you for putting up some funds that also help out with that process. I know when I go out there with my family, we run into Blonde or Reynolds Brown jogging, you know, getting her exercising. And so we're civilians. When we're on the trail. We're not council person A or council person B. We're just average Philadelphia citizens trying to enjoy themselves. And so we have a vested stake in making sure um, that trail was safe. And so I just want to say that um, for the record and just thank you for your leadership and your support on this issue as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you for your continued work. Um, as you know, violence can happen anywhere to anyone in the city of Philadelphia. So thank you for your continued vigilance on that very, very important issue. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Mr. President, and I wanted to thank my colleagues also for their um, comment and conversation and, and uh, making a more awareness about the J.B. Kelly mold situation. And uh, as a district council person who represents J.B. Kelly, which is in Germantown, um, you know, it's, it's obviously not a surprise in terms of the conditions of our schools, um, that they need a lot of work, they need a lot of help, they need the resources. And so um, beyond repairing the school and preparing it for children, our young people, and uh, teaching professionals to go back into the school, we also need to make sure that while they are out, that there is an action plan. And we did have a conversation with the district as well um, because some parents were notified quite late yesterday that there wouldn't be school today. So um, I want to thank the district for working with us on that. And we look forward to putting together an action plan, uh, not just for J.B. Kelly, but if this should occur and likely will occur in the future, uh, what is the action plan so that our children do not lose any more educational time than they have to. Uh, so again, I wanted to thank them uh, for that. Also, I wanted to mention that today I introduced a resolution opposing President Trump and his administration for their attempt to curtail women's access to contraception. The Trump administration announced plans to roll back a crucial Affordable Care Act mandate that requires employers to cover contraception for women employees earlier this month. The announcement was met with swift resistance from the medical community, human rights legal groups, and our own Attorney General Josh Shapiro, who announced Wednesday that he's going to be suing the Trump administration for its most recent attempt to revoke health care access from our most vulnerable citizens. Since taking office, Trump has demonstrated time and time again that he has no interest in protecting the rights and privileges of every American citizen. He and his policies have attacked people of color, Muslims, immigrants, low-income Americans, and women. The administration's latest move to rip contraception coverage from the hands of as many as 2.5 million women in Pennsylvania and millions more across the country will roll back the clock on women's health care. In addition to, uh, to preventing unplanned pregnancy, 
birth control treats several other women's health issues, including ovary syndrome, hormonal imbalances, and others. That the Trump administration seeks to allow employers to take away vital health care from women on the basis of a religious or moral objective is in fact morally corrupt. And as usual, low-income women will be most adversely affected. We as elected officials and as a nation simply cannot allow this to happen. We have to stand with the women of Philadelphia and across the nation and show them that we support you, we care about you, and we will fight against any discrimination of any kind. And ultimately, this is about power and this is about the control of women. If you have a religious objection to birth control, then don't use it. But for those who do use it, ripping away this coverage is completely unacceptable. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to thank Councilwoman Blackwell and all my colleagues who have been supportive. This morning I was going to come to Council and um, speak to the $120,000 that was raised through NIDOS PAPR, which the Kenny administration and others have been an integral member of. Um, we've, we've invested uh, $25,000 in the Salvation Army's 14 feeding stations in Puerto Rico, and we're shipping another $25,000 worth of um, solar lights and other things, working with PICO. Uh, we sh have shipped 189000 thousand pounds of goods uh, to Puerto Rico and I was going to celebrate uh, the kind of energy um, around this effort and then this morning President Trump tweeted um, about Puerto Rico about our debt and about the fact that FEMA could not uh, stay there forever. Uh, FEMA is just arriving and it's still not at the same level as other comparable uh, situations. Uh, I just wanted to remind folks that FEMA is still in New Orleans um, doing infrastructure investment in the billions. This is 12 years later, so I don't know what he's talking about. Thank you, Mr. President. I Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to say something inappropriate. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, uh, that concludes our speeches on behalf of the majority and the minority. Uh, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown for a motion to adjourn. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I move that Council stand adjourned until Thursday, October 19th at 10 a.m. Thank you. It's been moved and probably second to Council stand adjourned until Thursday, October 19th, 2017, 10 a.m. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, eyes have it. Thank you all very much.